Sterling Staff uh, with Great Plains Ag. Hi, I'm Nick Geppenbach, Training Administrator with Great Plains Ag. And today we're going to walk you through the calibration process on a ground drive DD7600. Yep, and everything we're going to do in this video is going to be done on our trainer here. And this trainer is exactly what you'd find on the box drill. The only thing that's missing is the actual box itself. So all the adjustments, features, the ground drive, high and low gearbox, everything you'll find exactly on the drill behind us. So with that, Sterling, let's get started. All right. So first thing we're going to do is head over here to the tongue of the drill where we have our calibration tools in the calibration box. One thing I will point out here is we do have a QR code. You can scan that with your phone and it will take you to the video for the calibration of the ground drive drill. So if you ever get yourself in a pickle and need some instructions, that's a great resource to help you out. So opening the toolbox here, inside we have our weigh bag and scale. We have our, our catch tray to catch the seed coming out of the meters. And lastly, we have our uh, calibration crank. So everything we need to do a real easy calibration on this. And the next thing I'm gonna grab out of the manual box here is our seed rate manual. So this has all the necessary information to perform our calibration. So I'm gonna take these over to our trainer over here. So now, um, today for this example, we're gonna be planting wheat. And Nick, you're a Kansas wheat farmer. Mm -hmm. What's kind of a rate we should target here for this example? Uh, so let's shoot for 80 pounds. Okay, so we're gonna target 80 pounds for this example. So open up my seed rate manual to wheat for the ground drive 26 foot drill this is a seven and a half inch spacing we're going to be working with here so with that targeting 80 pounds we have a couple of different options whether we want to run this gear range in high or low now our recommendation is we want to run whichever setting gets the gearbox further away from the extremes <laughs> being zero or 100 so in this case um, we're going to be running the high range because that gets us a little bit further from the edge so for seven and a half inch, it's saying for a gearbox setting of 25, it's going to be 76 pounds. For a gearbox setting of 30, it's going to be about 92 pounds. And these are just, you know, estimates, starting points, give us a ballpark. So for this example, I think we're going to shoot for about 27, should get us kind of right in the middle there and get us close for this, this example. Okay. So what the gearbox setting at 27, what we'll do is we'll actually come over here to this drill. It's going to be a little bit easier for us to see. And we'll walk you guys through the procedure of how to properly set this gearbox. So being that we want to be at 27, the best way or the proper way to set this range or this setting is to grab the seed rate handle, pull it all the way down first until it's tight, run it all the way back up until it's tight, and then come back down to our setting. It's so like Sterling had said, we're going to shoot for about 27. So we'll go with that right there. And that's how we properly set the gearbox. And I'll go ahead and do it back on the trainer as well. All right, Sterling, gearbox is set. All right, so we got the gearbox set. We're already in high range here. Again, that's just the tensioner you can loosen and swap the chain over if you do need to change the range. It's pretty easy process there as well. So we're in high range. Uh, next thing it says, we're gonna run our normal seeds wheel. So on the beating metering system, we always have two metering wheels, a standard seed or a large seed and a small seed metering wheel. So standard seed being this darker gray detent, and it's saying that we need to have the upper slide position and gate in setting B. So the settings are all the way closed, setting B, which is in the middle, which is where you'll run for basically mm -hmm. all operation, and then all the way open, which is what you'll have it at for clean out typically. So we're gonna set it in that first detent there on all these standard seed wheels. We're gonna run five, because with our catch tray, we can catch uh, five meters on a seven and a half inch row spacing machine. So we got the upper slide gate position set, Next thing we're gonna hit on is the lower seed gate. So Buck's telling us to set this at gate position two. Um, we currently have it at one and a half. And Nick, mm -hmm. why don't we uh, explain kind of why we're doing that and how we ended up at one and a half instead of two, which is what the rate manual is telling us. So like Sterling said, the material rate is saying two. And so that's a great starting point, very similar to the way the gearbox is. So, you know, we're shooting for 27. So. The material rate is just a starting point is mm -hmm. what it is. So when we talk about that lower seed gate or lower seed flap, what that is, is it's actually this piece right here. So I painted this one white on our metering system so that way you guys can see it. So 
all of these cups are tied together with one common yep, shaft. Single point. And so when we make this adjustment to two, what we're doing is we're adjusting this flap either closer or further away from the actual meter wheels. So let's talk about the importance of that. Okay, so this setting is extremely critical for the accuracy of this metering system. And I'm gonna illustrate it here um, as you can see. So we have this set on setting two. You can see in here that we have quite a bit of gap in between the lower seed flap and the meter wheels. It's still doing a pretty good job of metering. We're getting that even flow across both sides of that chevron. Um, for exaggeration, I'm gonna show what it looks like at like setting three. So here's where you can really see kind of the effect of having that lower seed gate set mm -hmm. way too far and open. And you can almost hear some missing too. Yep. There was that steady flow at two, but we kind of hear some gas with three. Yep. It's just kind of shoveling seed out. You'll get a lot and then a little and a lot and a little. Mm -hmm. It's just very inconsistent and will affect your rates a lot. So what I like to do, you start at the seed rate manual too. We said there's quite a bit of gap there. We're gonna tighten it up a little bit. And we want to tighten it up until we get to the point to where we see seed kind of flying out or start maybe seeing some damage to our seed. And that's when we know we have it too tight. Typically, then you back it off about a half a setting. And that's right where you'll want to be, um, you know, one less than when you start seeing seed flap it, fly, or flying out of the, mm -hmm. the metering system. So we are, we're at one and a half here. We can see we're pretty close. There's not a whole lot of air gap in between the metering wheel and the lower seed flap. It's a pretty good setting. So for example, I'm gonna shut this down all the way to show you guys what you'll see and hear if you have that lower seed flap set too tight. Correct. So I have it set way too tight here. Eventually you'll start seeing seeds pop out of the metering wheel or hitting the windshield if you have the windshields on. And this is where it's really nice to have two people doing a calibration, especially on a ground drive unit. You can have someone cranking the handle, another person back there watching and seeing what these meters are doing. So mm -hmm. that's how you know you have it way too tight. And I would back off you know, a setting or two until you find that uh, happy medium uh, right before you start seeing seed pop out or seeing any damage to your seed. Correct. All right. So, so, so a lower seed setting. Or we're going to set that at one and a half, one and which a half. is kind of what we're seeing is best in a lot of situations for um, the most accuracy. Again, setting two generally will work, but if you're looking for the maximum accuracy of this metering system, you're probably going to want to tighten that down just mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. So we got lower seed flap set on one and a half. We got a gearbox set at 27. Got our drive range in high. Got our drive range in high. So now I we're, think we're ready to uh, start cranking some seed out. So that's yep. the other thing that's great about the BD is when we want to do a calibration, all these funnels just pop off with the seed hoses and they can hang down there, making it real easy to prepare for a calibration and get our seed tray under there. We don't have to get our hose ring pliers out like we uh, used to on previous models. We got our hand crank. To turn the meters, we got our catch tray, which hangs right on that shaft underneath these meters. Again, five meters on a seven and a half inch row spacing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing in the seed rate manual, at the beginning of the manual, it'll tell you um, the amount of revolutions you'll need to crank to cover an acre. So Correct. when we're calibrating a BD, um, we really want to calibrate more is always better. The more seed you can run out of the metering system, the more accurate the calibration is going to be. However, you know, we understand the reality that you don't want to sit here and crank it, mm -hmm. you know, 263 times in this case for a 26 foot drill. So what we typically recommend for a starting point, um, a tenth of an acre, you know, if you get down to some of those lower rates um, or more valuable seeds where you want to make sure you're dead on, you may want to do a fifth of an acre or even more than that. But mm -hmm. minimum we recommend is about a tenth of an acre. Yep. So with that, I like to start with my calibration handle in a set spot so I know in relation where I need to end up. So in this case, it's directly down. I need to go 26.3 turns to do a tenth of an acre. Yep. So but prior to that, we wanna make sure we charge our meters with correct. some seed. Correct, so I'm gonna turn it a few revolutions, make sure we got seed coming out of all the meters. Which then we do. we'll empty the catch tray, put it back in the box. And now we can run our calibration. And a really important part of the calibration process to make sure we have those meters primed and seed running through those meters. So now I'm going to turn it 26.3 times.
Okay, so I cranked it about 26.3 times, should be a tenth of an acre. Yep. And so, so next step while Sterling's doing that is we need to get our weigh bucket and our scale out. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing we want to do is turn our scale on. And so the scale has got multiple options. Yep. So we can do ounces or pounds. Pounds is really the easiest way to do this calibration. Yep. Makes the so, math easier later on. So what I recommend doing is to take your bucket, weigh it, it's 0.8. So we tear it out. So it's zero now. Zero. We can take it back off. Sterling's gonna add our seed in here. I usually, usually try to level out the seed within the bucket. We'll put it back on. And so we got 0.98 of a pound. 0.98 pounds. Yep. One thing to note on that scale is if you tear it and then we put the seed in, if you let that scale set too long, it will turn off mm -hmm. and reset. So you wanna make sure that you either do this process quick enough that the scale doesn't turn on or re-tear the scale after you do the calibration or before. Just make sure that scale doesn't reset before we get the weight of it, so. Correct. We have 0.98 pounds. Divide that by five, because that's how many meter wheels or meters we're catching. And that leaves us with, pull out my handy dandy field calculator. So we have 0.98 divided by five equals 0.196. And so that's how much weight we're catching per metering system. Correct. Nick, how many meters do we have on a 26 foot So drill? we've got 42 rows on a 26 foot, seven and a half inch spacing drill. So now we're gonna do 42 times 0.196. Mm -hmm. That equals 8.232. And we have to remember that we did a tenth of an acre. Correct. So we'll take that 8.232 times 10, which will give us 82 and a third pounds, essentially is what it is. Yep. And so we're really close. Um, this is you know pretty acceptable right here. If we want to try to fine tune it down to get to 80 pounds, we could come back, pull our lever all the way down, go all the way back up, maybe set it to 26, yep. redo a calibration and see where we're at. Yep. But this is a great starting point. If you have a two or three section drill, you can use this gearbox setting as a starting point for your next calibration on the other box. Help things speed up a little bit, might get you a little bit closer in the ballpark even yet, so. Yep, and then if you guys have any more questions regarding VD7600 calibration, visit www.greatplainsag.com.